The Jaguars have a new defensive coordinator. Ryan Nielsen is in. Bucky Brooks is with us now for more. And, you know, he's going to be 45 years old in March. He's been with the Saints and the Falcons. What else do you know about Nielsen and his style as a coordinator? <clears throat> Look, man, he's done a really good job in a short time. Uh, the job he did as a coordinator in Atlanta uh, was really impressive. Uh, he turned over he, – he really – turned a defense that ranked in the bottom third in several major categories and had him in the top 10. Uh, he did it uh, using, look, a multiple style. They used multiple fronts, played a lot of man-to-man -man coverage, a lot of nose-to-nose -nose stuff where they take away the layups and the gimmies and kind of force you to make big boy throws outside the numbers. And, you know, when you, when you play that kind of style, you can really kind of suffocate teams because you force them to work over uh, – down the line, you force them to take low percentage throws and they have to be on. And so the key will be taking the personnel that the Jaguars have currently and seeing a, if the current personnel is good enough to play that style. And if not, what pieces do you need to add to the puzzle to allow them to play, play the defense the way that he sees fit? You know, there's a lot of you, you read some of the past players who've played for him and under him, and there's a lot of, uh, you know, they, they use the word fiery a lot, a lot of attack and aggressive. What does all that really mean when you're dialing up plays on defense? Well, look, there are a couple of different ways that you can play um, in the National Football League. And I think if the playoffs have shown us uh, the only way that you can play successfully is you got to bring pressure. You have to find a way to put pressure on the quarterback and the opposing play caller. And you can do that by blitzing and sending five and six man pressures. You can do that by using simulated pressures where you're sending a second level defender, but you're only rushing four, but you're really keeping the pressure on the quarterback to figure out who's coming and what to do it. You need uh, a defense loaded with urgent athletes, guys that are fast, physical, that want to get after it. You have guys in the back end that can play man to man that are athletic enough to stick with their guys and understand it. And then you have to be able to teach it in a way that they're not bogged down by the clutter, that they can play fast and get after it. And so uh, I think Nelson has already shown that he's able to take a system and take a team quickly and teach them how to play. I think I am just curious about the assistance that could come with him because the assistant coaches really play a huge part in helping him to get everybody on the same page. And, you know, in his last couple stops in the New Orleans and in Atlanta, he was the defensive line coach on top of being the coordinator, Bucky, juggling both roles. Well, the thing about that is uh, I'm a big believer and you never leave your expertise even though you get a promotion, you know. And so when you are a guy who is the defensive coordinator, if the D-line has been your baby, you can pay close attention to that. Uh, if you think about this league and the way this league is going and really has always been, you hear people talk about it being a line of scrimmage league. O-line, D-line play is critical. The teams that are playing uh, in the Final Four, their defensive line dominates. And so if I'm going to be the defensive coordinator, I'm going to make sure that I have a big part in making and in, in, in helping the D-line play at their best. And so for guys like Josh Allen, hopefully he stays, uh, Trayvon Walker and some of the other guys up front, for the defensive coordinator to be in that room providing that instruction, yeah, you eliminate the middleman. The message goes directly to the people that are the most important people on the defense, and that's the front line unit. All right, Bucky, um, final thought with you here. Ryan Nielsen, now the defensive coordinator. Um, and you mentioned that you, uh, the staff is kind of the next step, right, if, once you've gotten the mm -hmm. job as a coordinator to fill out everything else around you in the office. Yeah, look, the, the staff is everything. Now, I'm hopeful. We'll see if it plays out. But there are two guys, to me, that are particularly of note that are on his staff in Atlanta that you kind of hope make their way to Jacksonville. One is Jerry Gray. Jerry Gray has been a longtime defensive coordinator. He's been associate head coach at a few different places. Everywhere he has been, the secondary has gotten better. He's a great teacher. He's a former player. He's done it for a long time. He does a great job with young players developing them. The other guy is Frank Bush who's also played a variety of roles on the defensive side of the ball, being a former D coordinator, linebacker coach, another great teacher, tactician. Uh, those two guys, to me, are really critical. I'm hoping that those guys come into the fold because, man, they will add a wealth of experience and know-how to the positions. Bucky, we can always count on you. You bring a lot of experience and know-how to this position, and we'll uh, talk to you again next time. Okay, man, let's do it.